Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to be speaking about reducing your cholesterol. More importantly, whether or not you should take statins. So it's quite a big debate in the steroid community whether or not you should take a statin because it is known theoretically, or we've seen it. We've seen a lot of bodybuilders die of cardiovascular disease. So this is an interesting debate and I thought I'd just add my thoughts or my opinion on it. So, statins are essentially drugs used to lower your cholesterol, and this, in turn, reduces your chance of having a cardiovascular attack, whether it be a heart attack, stroke, or any kind of cardiovascular or atherosclerotic process. But it's a lot more effective than other drugs, and has benefits on mortality and morbidity that other cholesterol-lowering drugs don't seem to have, well, such as azitamide, uh, which does lower your cholesterol, but doesn't seem to have as great a mortality or morbidity benefit as statins, and that is because statins have these pleiotrophic effects. What these pleiotrophic effects are, it, it includes things like stabilization of the plaque in the arteries, which is why it's quite commonly given as soon as you come into the hospital with a heart attack, because it stabilizes that plaque so it doesn't essentially burst and cause an acute heart attack or ischemic event. So as I mentioned in the introduction, the main reason for this is because of bodybuilders and the risk of steroid use and heart disease. We don't have any data that quantifies the risk of heart disease in bodybuilders, which makes it a bit more difficult to recommend or not recommend statins in them, because if we had certain amount of stats as to how much steroids put you at risk, then it would be a bit easier. And the issue is steroids aren't all the same. There are different kinds of steroids. There are things like testosterone, or you get things like Tren and Winstrol that <laughs> destroy your arteries, essentially. But this video is also meant for those who might just be interested in whether or not they should take a statin at a young age. So we're going to talk about primary prevention. So none of this is medical advice, I'm just looking at the data around it, which there isn't a lot of high quality data, but it's interesting nonetheless. So primary prevention is essentially taking a statin prior to the evidence of, you know, plaque buildup, which is in theory incorrect because a lot of people seem to have plaque buildup at an early age these days, but um, that's essentially what primary prevention in this case is. Obviously, if you have established atherosclerosis or atherosclerotic processes, then stick to <laughs> your statin or whatever medication you're on. So what if you are a younger individual, especially a younger individual taking PEDs? Is there any data to suggest that you might benefit, benefit from a statin? Well, we have a lot of data in middle age and older people that show the benefit of primary prevention or statins in primary prevention, but not so much in younger people. And as we know, with medications, whilst they do come with benefits, there are always risks to using them for long periods, because the longer you use it, the higher, theoretically, your risk of getting an adverse effect is. Um, so I will be referring to this interesting article that I found. It's called Statin Therapy in or for Young Adults, a Long-Term Investment Worth Considering. It's essentially just a literature review, but it introduces a lot of interesting points, and I don't think we should implement any of what is said here, but it's just interesting or something for you to consider. So the reason that they wanted to look into statin use in younger adults is because of this interesting trial. It was called the Cholesterol Treatment Trialists. So one of the major findings in this study, or meta-analysis, is the fact that there was a 25% reduction in vascular events. 
things such as heart attacks, strokes, things like that, from those without established atherosclerotic disease. There is also a 15% reduction in mortality and 9% reduction in all-cause mortality. So that's quite interesting. But what was more interesting and what made these researchers want to look at statin use in younger individuals is that the people that derive the biggest if or benefit from the implementation of primary prevention with statin use were actually the people with the lowest absolute risk at that point in time, i.e younger individuals derive the biggest relative benefit from the use of statins as a primary preventive med primary preventive strategy. So what are the current recommendations for statin use in people or young adults? Well, so far the guidelines haven't really changed. We're still using those derived in 2013, which says that if you are 21 and over with a LDL cholesterol of 190 milligrams per deciliter, then statin treatment should be initiated, or if you're between 40 and 75 with a 10-year atherosclerotic vascular event risk, um, more than 7.5%, then you should be initiated on statin therapy, or at least should consider it. But a criticism of this recommendation is that, again, they're still based on absolute risks, not relative risks. Another issue of importance is that atherosclerosis is a lifelong event that we can see in early adulthood, but that doesn't necessarily mean we would benefit from statins without the data, but it's just something to consider. So what are the risks of statins? Well, the most commonly reported side effects are myalgia and joint pain, things like that. So you get a raise, creatine kinase. Those are the biggest side effects and they're quite commonly reported. And that with this, there is an increased risk of uh, adverse event called rhabdomyolysis, which is essentially I'm probably explaining it poorly, but essentially muscle breaks down and it re releases myoglobulin, which kind of blocks up the kidneys and precipitates this acute kidney injury or failure. And another thing that many people might or might not know is that there is a small risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It is a very small risk, however, it did reach statistical significance, so you can't ignore that. But in a separate study in older adults, they found that this risk of type 2 diabetes did not overweigh the benefit the statins give you. But again, that's in older adults. Now, another big one that a lot of people seem to worry about is the cognitive impairment or memory impairment that occurs with statins. So the data on this is a bit limited and it isn't in fact shown for sure and any memory impairment that was recorded was reversible on secession or stopping the statin. Again, some people seem to think that extremely low levels of LDL cholesterol impair your cognitive ability, which is not true and hasn't really been established. So just as a side note, since we're talking all things cardiovascular disease or risk of cardiovascular disease related, let's talk about the calcium uh, coronary artery calcium score, or the CAC. It's actually, in fact, a very useful score, and in a lot of studies they showed that even if you had a slight score or anything more than zero, you were at a five times greater risk of having a major vascular event. Or more specifically, actually, I think it was five times increased risk of having a coronary, of having coronary heart disease or a heart attack. The only issue with this test is it's not widely available and quite costly, especially in the government health system, if they were to use this test. And we still don't really know, in younger adults especially, what the score entails. We just know that you're at increased risk. And if you do have established other risk factors, a positive result does indicate you should use statins, but as a primary measurement, we don't really know. 
So from looking at all the data they could in the study, they derived this flow chart, or came up with this flow chart. And so you start at the top, and at the top it says if you have an AS CVD or this risk of more than 39% lifetime risk, that is, we, you have 10 year risk and lifetime risk. If you have a lifetime risk of more than 39% or a significant risk factor, then you should go into, you take the next step and look at which age range you fall into. So I also question whether PED use would be a significant risk factor. Since we do know it predisposes you to cardiovascular disease, but we don't have enough data. Again, we just don't know the risk that PEDs pose. And since there are so many different types of PEDs, like which one are we going to say is the most significant? So if you want to calculate your ASCVD lifetime risk, let's, uh, you can easily find it. I'll link the tool that you can use in the description below and essentially you fill out relevant medical history such as being a smoker or not being a smoker your ldl cholesterol things like that and it ger generates a percentage and if it's greater than 39 percent then according to this research paper you should move on to the next step just an interesting side note as i've mentioned in a previous video there are actually some steroids that cause a uh, <laughs> this stress to your blood vessels, Winstrol particularly, the same amount of stress as smoking does. However, these, these papers aren't best quality or highest <laughs> quality of research. I'm not recommending you use this flowchart, it's just one they derived and something to consider and perhaps discuss with your medical practitioner. So essentially, if you fall into the risk of uh, if you have a greater risk than 39% or uh, a significant risk factor and you're age 20 to 29, then you look at whether or not there's familial hypercholesterolemia in your family. If there's not, then lifestyle interventions are of importance. That is an issue in steroid users because a lifetime a lifestyle interventions would entail stopping the offending agent. So perhaps that is what you should do. But if there is familial hypercholesterolemia in your family, then perhaps you should consider it. But all of this is a discussion you should have with your general medical practitioner. And essentially, each decade you should reconsider the use of statins. So as you reach into a new age bracket, you calculate your risk again and see whether or not you should consider a statin if you were not if you did not make the criteria before. And as you see here in the 40 to 49 age group, they say you should calculate your 10 year as low sclerotic cardiovascular disease score. It, this tool I have linked will generate your 10 year risk. However, the 10 year risk is only applicable for people over the age of 40. There is no 10 year risk for people between 20 and 30. That's just because this is how it was calculated based on the participants in the study. But again, that doesn't really answer the question as to whether a steroid user should use statins or not. And this is quite a complicated topic because we still don't know the risk that steroids pose. We do know it does increase the risk because there are a lot of case reports, but we don't really have definitive data. But again, I would, re I would consider this and I would take steroid use into account when calculating your risks of having these cardio or vascular events. And obviously this process should be a discussion between you and your general med medical practitioner. But who knows? New research may come out in a few years which shows that a lot of people should take statins or no one should take them. But so far, we don't really know for younger individuals. We do know, however, there is a possible benefit, but we still don't know whether the benefits outweigh the risks that they pose. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will gladly answer them. 
if you need to email me, you can find my email all over my page or on my website. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. For